bacteria that I killed when I made boiled the water for this coffee, all the way to the wars and violence happening all over the world right now, if we're talking about suffering on that scale, then the first thing I'll say is I don't find it helpful to, to talk about if I will become overwhelmed by it. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> I am going to be overwhelmed by that. I do not have the capacity to hold all of that. Uh, so if I, if I have the desire to traffic in it, which I do, I'm going to touch overwhelm. But I like to just start there. Just like uh, I, if I, I would cause myself a lot of suffering if I was standing next to a pool and saying to myself, I'm going to get in this and see if I get wet. <laughs> <laughs> that would cause me suffering, right? Because <laughs> there'd be some part of me that would be imagining or hoping that maybe I won't get wet this time. Maybe it's okay that my cell phone is still in my swimming trunk pocket. So we're going to get wet. We're going to get wet. We're going to get overwhelmed when we take our practice to this place. When I was introduced, when I got the talk for the very first time about the five mindfulness trainings, it was from a very senior nun in our tradition, Sister Annabelle Laity. And she's one of Ty's right hands. And this question was asked of her that day. Uh, this was my very first time at a monastery in Thich Nhat Hanh tradition. I'll never forget the talk. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, and somebody raised their hand and asked a very similar question, like, ah, you know, I, I want to stay in touch with suffering. I, all the trainings start with the words, all five of them start with the words, aware of the suffering. I want to stay aware, but how much news should I consume? Like, how aware? And the very senior nun, Sister Annabelle, smiled and said, oh, well, I listen to at least five minutes of news every month. <laughs> <laughs> she said, of course, the content of it is always the same. It's always about people suffering and therefore causing suffering for others. It's always the same. She said, but I like to listen to it least five minutes of it a month to remind me how much suffering is out there. Because I live here at this monastery and some elements of that are present here, but a lot of them are not. No one is at war here, for example. There's no violence here. There's no hunger here. And this really struck me. I'm like, wow, because what, what was she saying? She was reminding me not to get lost, reminding us not to get lost in the details of it. It's like when Russia invaded Ukraine. And I had a lot of students, including here at the Sangha one Sunday, uh, shortly after that conflict began, express so much despair and so much upset about this new horror. <laughs> what are we going to do? And, oh, I'm, I can't, I'm addicted to it. I'm reading about it all day. I'm following the war. And the question was asked, like, well, how can we manage this? How should we hold this? And my answer was, and remains, like, well, the day before Russia invaded Ukraine, the whole world was at war. The day before Russia invaded Ukraine, our own country is killing, torturing, and imprisoning people all over the world with extreme violence right now, right now. Our country, not Russia, not Ukraine, the United States, for those of us that are Americans on the call. So, rather than getting myself all worked up about Ukraine on this new thing, I tried to use it like those five minutes that Sister Annabelle was referring to 
And I try to remind myself like, oh yeah, this is a very good reminder that this is happening all the time. That this is the world we live in. And how do I want to be a part of the solution? How am I living my life right now? In what I read, what I say, what I think, who I spend time with, what I eat, where I buy things, all of these things that I'm doing with my body and my feelings and my speech and my mind are creating this world. There is no environment outside of me. I am it. We are it. So if I want the world to be different than that, which I do, right? I, I don't want there to be a war anywhere. I don't want people to be killing each other in violence anywhere. I don't want people to be speaking unkindly and calling each other names. So how do I, how do I practice with that? Peace in oneself, peace in the world. I am very clear that I only have this tiny bit of energy that I can give externally to that. And it can look however you like it to look, in activism, in voting, in charitable work, in grassroots community organization for a specific cause. There's a million things we can quote unquote do. But none of them will be powerful. None of those actions will be effective if I'm not home taking care of myself so that I am in peace, so that I am being peace in the world. If I bring the same anger to my activism and my peace work that people bring to their racism or their classism or their nationalism or whatever it is that they're doing that's dividing instead of bringing people together as a family, if I bring that same energy to my work, even if its aspirations are peaceful, it will not produce peace because I am not being peace. I'm still part of the problem. 